Hey, booktube. Uh, I am a little angry that I'm about to make this video. I'm really sad that I'm going to have to make this video. But for those of you who live in the United States, and probably for some of you who don't, you will have recently heard all of the news surrounding the Brock Allen Turner Stanford rape case. And that kind of thing hits really close to home consent and rape culture and how we deal with both victims of and perpetrators of rape within our national community our legal community and for me within a book related community so I've been really frustrated and really angry and looking for a way to channel all of those feelings into something more positive so here we are for this video for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I will link to some news sources down below. But in summary, Brock Allen Turner is a perpetrator and committed rapist who was at a Stanford party and ended up sexually assaulting a young girl while she was completely unconscious. He was convicted of rape and for various reasons, instead of the mandatory two-year minimum sentence that rapists are supposed to get in California, he was given six months. And then that six months was cut in half for good behavior within the penal system. And so he will be out in a couple of months. And he will have to register as a sex offender for the rest of his life. But I just feel like that's not really quite enough. I, I, I just, the whole, mm, 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 mm. the whole thing just makes me mad. It just gives me rage feelings. So that's not what we're about today, though. We are not here to rage. This is about doing something productive. So for me, the easiest way for me to kind of absorb and channel and refocus all of this energy was through young adult literature, was through my chosen professional career, and kind of looking forward to what I could maybe do to better the young adult community around me, was in talking to and working with teens in my library position, I mean, children are the future, and if we want to end a culture of rape and perpetuate a different standard, then we need to start with the kids and teens we have today. So that's what I did. I led some conversations at my library, and we talked about some books that both discuss the experience of rape victims, as well as books that promote consent and sex positivity. So that's what I'm going to share with you today. I'm going to share with you the reading list that I gave to those teens. First, when it comes to understanding or gaining empathy for victims of rape, there are a couple books I would recommend. First and foremost is Speak by Louisa Hall Anderson. For those of you who have never heard of it or read it, this book came out in the 90s and was about a young girl who is basically dealing with selective mutism after she is raped at a high school party. She doesn't speak for, I think it's over a year after that because she's just so internalized and is dealing with processing that particular physical trauma. That is definitely one where I would recommend to start. While it's not technically the first, it is considered kind of the first benchmark book dealing with rape in a high school setting. And then we have some more modern books. We have All the Rage by Courtney Summers, What We Saw by Aaron Harlitzer, Asking for It by Louise O'Neill, and Exit Pursued by a Bear by E.K. Johnston. This last one is the most recent one. All of these deal with party situations they're not your kind of what you might imagine as girl walks home gets nabbed in a back alley that's not the reality of rape what we know about the reality of rape is that it is often perpetrated by somebody that you know or have met or that is interacting with you in a much more casual social setting i.e at a party so a lot of these books especially the more modern ones deal with date rape drugs and party drugs or just drinking and then making decisions that put you in a place of danger or that threaten your safety so i would definitely recommend checking out all four of those and then we within the discussion flipped to talking about books that are kind of not the opposite of that, but that promote much more sex positivity and consent and can kind of serve as a model for what it is that we want to see happen in terms of teen relationships. Uh, there are several books that I think fall well into this category. The first one is First by Lori Flynn. This is about a, this is a book about a girl who essentially has a very, very poor first sexual experience. She's not raped. She just has kind of 
you know, it's not the fireworks and butterflies that she always expected it to be. And so in order to kind of overcome that for herself, she thinks it would be a great idea to help other boys learn what they're doing sexually so that when they have sex with their girlfriends, they can give their girlfriends the great first time that she never had. Um, this book is all about sex positivity and consent, that it is a really good example of not demonizing females who have sex and realizing that sex positivity is a street that goes both ways. Then we also have books like Kissing Ted Callahan and Openly Straight, both of which deal with teenagers having sex, but having sex in a way that is both positive and consensual and doesn't define them for the rest of their lives. A lot of what we see in fiction kind of depicts teen sex and sexuality as the end all be all. If you have had it, you are slutty. If you haven't had it, you are pristine and vice versa. It sounds like a very old trope, but it's definitely still one that exists. Or we get books that are entirely revolved around and dedicated to teens having sex and that is kind of the pinnacle the big climax of the book indicating that for teens having or not having sex is essentially the end all be all within their own lives and that's not really a healthy viewpoint to be in especially if you are one of the one in four to potentially be sexually assaulted and you feel that having that assault done to you then puts you at a disadvantage or somehow defines you in a way that it does not. So I will link to all of these books down below. I will also link to several articles that I used in putting together this kind of syllabus, so to speak. These articles are incredibly well written and recommend books of their own that I have not discussed. So I definitely recommend you check it out if this is something that bothers you. Or let me know down below what your thoughts and feelings are on the topic. If you've read any of these, if you now think you're going to read any of these. And please know that this is always a safe space to share. I will be policing it as such because this is my channel and I get to say who and what goes on here. So please let me know down below if you have anything to contribute to the discussion. As always, you can look me up on Twitter, Goodreads, Instagram. I'm all over the internet and I'm always here to talk books with you guys. All right, everybody have a good day. Bye.